The NFL trade deadline has been and gone, and for better or worse, the Eagles opted to stay put, reluctant to pull the trigger on a blockbuster move with prices soaring ever higher to get a game-changing player. But the team did make one move, and that was trading for Browns defensive end Gennard Avery in exchange for a 2021 fourth round pick. And when people learned of the compensation given up, they were a little bit flummoxed. Why would the Eagles spend so much on a player who has been a healthy scratch for most of 2019? Well, that's what we're going to dive into today because I promise you I'm not just trying to exaggerate when I say I genuinely think the Eagles have a real diamond in the rough here and someone that, believe it or not, can tick more than one box on the list of defensive needs. So without further ado, strap yourselves in. My name is Liam Jenkins and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, we are giving away a free t-shirt every video now between now and Christmas. So all you've got to do to enter is make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and as soon as we hit 400 likes we'll pick a random commenter so make sure you drop your opinions on this topic down below and we'll give them details on how to get their free t-shirt. We love you guys, you are the greatest fans on the planet, we're so thankful for your support and we want to reward you for that. So if you help us get to 15,000 subscribers by Christmas, we'll help you by giving you some PSN merch to rep as well and as always make sure you are getting your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers at phillysportsnetwork.com. Now during his rookie season the former sixth round pick was used as a stand-up defensive end and it was a bizarre transition period for him because he was asked to drop back in coverage a lot and also rush the pass which is very different than if you're doing say from a three or four point start. He ended his rookie year with 4.5 sacks and this wasn't one of them but he displayed two very explosive traits of the Eagles love out of their defensive end, which is a quick get off and a lot of bend around the edge. Avery is a scary athlete who has a lot of pass rushing moves at his disposal. We didn't really get put in a position to use them during his rookie year, but what we did see was a flash of a very technical pass rusher. Now look at this. Instead of squaring up to the tackle or trying to ball rush his way to Roethlisberger, he takes a massive lunge outside to get vertical. This forces the lineman to open his hips, generates leverage, he rips away, and that forces Roethlisberger to step up in the pocket into press and ultimately go down for a sack. It's a huge play. Again, Avery is a scary athlete, but when you partner that with a very high football IQ and someone that can process the game so quickly, you get plays like this. He's able to rip inside an offensive lineman and force an interception due to the generated pressure. But if we take a look at this again and we slow it down and we just focus on the fundamentals and how he's going to attack number 71, he notices the vertical set, but he already knows with the distance between them, the lineman has to square up and step out. So he just swipes inside in one Fluent move with that inside arm, gets a QB hit, the ball's tipped in the air, it's an interception for Cleveland on a huge play once more. In the two games against Pittsburgh, he wasn't exactly Ben Roethlisberger's best friend by the end of it. Watch him get the speed off the edge here. This first step is absolutely electric. We just pause it here, he's already halfway through his second step. The Steelers are going to pull their left tackle, he embraces contact, shoves it off and then dives straight into the hole to make sure the running back goes down. That's everything you could want from someone trying to contain the run. This also helps him on stunts though because he can really drive into the chest of offensive linemen. There may be no better example than this. But just bulldozes the right guard out of the way and it allows Ogba to reap the rewards and bring down the quarterback. It's a perfect stunt by the defensive end. And if you just watch how he attacks the chest of this guard here, gets his hands up, uses what is a very thick base to drive him all the way outside of the play. You couldn't dream it up better. He's not someone that's light and rapid like a Derek Barnett. And I think Jim Schwartz made a great comparison Harrison. Likening him to Brandon Graham, he's a much stouter, much thicker defensive end, but he can really move. He's got a lot of speed and eccentricity to his play. Here's another example of him really bending the edge around here. That inside arm is so brutal, bends so well off the edge, rips down the arm of the lineman. It's an easy sack against Jeff Driscoll in week 16. But when I call Avery a technical pass rusher, this is a play that really stands out as to why. Just watch how everything falls together here. It's like he's a step ahead processing down the offensive lineman. Eyes up, swats that arm down. He's not even looking at the arm of the lineman. Swats it down, takes one extra lunge on the outside and dives into the path of the quarterback. You can't draw up pressure any better than this off the edge. And as a sub-package pass rusher, he's got real potential to make an impact. We're forgetting that the Eagles are already down to what is now Anthony Rush and Albert Huggins along with Bruce Hector at defensive tackle. They don't have an interior pass rush. But if you can move someone like Brandon Graham inside and you give him this opportunity as a 
stand up defensive end. Look at that speed off the edge. This is against the Steelers once more, but that inside arm comes up, turns the corner, gets to the quarterback, tips another interception. It's just subtle intricacies that he does so, so well and are vastly underrated. You can see why Browns fans were so disappointed to lose him because he just doesn't give up on plays. He's always looking at how to make an impact, turns up field there into Roethlisberger. He could have easily ran the ring or lost his balance or anything like that. He didn't. He kept his head on the quarterback. There's another example here where he just uses a straight up ball rush. And when I go back to saying he's a thicker defensive, I mean, this is against Mitchell Schwartz, a veteran, and he bullies his way with the ball rush into the path of Patrick Mahomes. But there's something subtle here as well. He does this almost Cristiano Ronaldo level step over for all the soccer fans. Like, look at this. Just cuts back outside, then gets his hands on, pushes him back, and just drives into the path. There's so much hustle there. And as an offensive lineman, you're playing a dangerous game when someone can beat you with both speed and power depending on how you line up and that is what we have. The difference is the processing like here he could have very easily pressed down into the pocket and tried to get to Roethlisberger and opened up a rushing lane. He didn't. He decides to contribute to the pick with pressure instead. There's a much better example of that here though against Keenan like he stops. He could have easily blitzed, come down and brought down the Broncos quarterback. He doesn't. He steps. He knows his eyes are looking to the right. So he peels back on the stunt, knowing that his teammate is going to come and fill that hole. So now we get to see this sideline to sideline speed. He comes down to Case Keenum, who then can't complete the check down pass. It's an incompletion. There's another great play here against Joe Flacco of the Raiders. Just jumps in the air, bats one down. And that awareness bleeds over so nicely into the coverage aspect of his game. This is where the Eagles are going to hit their home run of someone that can get at the line of scrimmage but drop back into coverage and be a menace. Against the Bengals here, 12 personnel, 2x2 two two set. The Browns have a single high safety and Avery's going to drop back into coverage and almost come away with an interception. Now he doesn't have the smoothest hit. Watch him read and react to the quarterback here. It's eyes assignment, eyes assignment and then sits perfectly in that zone and almost comes away with the ultimate golden egg. Here's another example against the New York Jets. Showing blitz, they've got two linebackers over the middle. He's essentially the third and he drops back and look at him just stay stride for stride with the receiver, break on the ball like a corner and make a play. This is my favorite play that I've seen him make though. The Browns are in cover two and the Panthers are gonna try and really exploit this. Now the Browns are gonna rotate their shell as I wish the Eagles would. So the strong safety is gonna come down to pick up the curl and flat route and that's gonna rotate the whole secondary around. It also means though that number 55 is gonna to drop back and take up this strong hook and curl responsibilities and he does so perfectly almost again coming away with a big time play but forcing the interception now it's a fantastic bit of defensive play calling by the coordinator but the eyes that read and react they're just drifting from one player to another perfectly reading where Cam Newton is going with that football you couldn't play that any better if you try whether you're a linebacker or a corner or whoever that was borderline perfection from number 55. We'll see it again. Just looking at his eyes, he's playing assignment, read and react, drops down, big time play from Jannard Avery. There are a couple of explosive plays from this game as well. Like this one stands out to me because he's gonna get back up the field so quickly. Look at him at the line of scrimmage and how rapidly he moves back into his zone to pick up the curl and flat and then clicks and closes on the ball like a machine. That's a cornerback play who's playing the intermediate. That's something that Sidney Jones would be tasked with in the opening weeks of the season or a nickel corner. But look at him come out of his stance, nice and open hips, reads the quarterback well and then breaks on the ball. He's got great acceleration, like almost linebacker acceleration to come down and stop that run from going anywhere. It's a firm tackling angle. He's not a liability in open field like you see with some heavier players that can get a little bit top heavy. It's just excellent. There's another example here against the Steelers where he identifies the screen and it all comes back to this awareness piece that I keep going on about. His IQ is so high. Now again, it's hard to play this position standing up, but he's looking at the quarterback, sees the screen. He doesn't even bother looking at the blocker. He knows what's coming, makes a beeline for the running back and just brings him down on the spot. Of course, all of what we've just spoken about bleeds over into playing the run and it's obviously an area where he thrives. And I'm not saying that Avery's gonna come out and be a pro bowler, but for a sixth round pick, this guy was a machine as a rookie. He just reads this so well, closes the hole for Philip Lindsay, who just has to take the L there in the game against the Denver Broncos. On this play, he starts off the screen, drives into the chest of the lead blocker, through him like he was a ghost, and then pushes the running back way back behind the line of scrimmage. He reads everything so quickly, and it's those instincts that this defense could really use right now because you've got Nate Gary struggling. Teams will try to pick on what is a very inexperienced group, but when you've got someone that can glue 
glide across the line of scrimmage like that on stunts, it's going to boost your pass rush so much. Fletcher Cox is going to get double teamed. He's going to get guys in his face. There is no one to take that attention off. But if you've got someone that can fly across the line of scrimmage, get into the face of a quarterback or draw a guard away, then it's going to open things up. It's going to take pressure off the linebackers who can play a little bit deeper now. And that disconnect between levels 1, 2 and 3 of the defense may start to fade. I don't know what we're going to see from Jim Schwartz, but when you've got a guy that can play like that, that lateral quickness to get from one side of the line of scrimmage to the other, you're going to have to utilize him. And whether he's a sub-package player or whether he starts overtaking Vinny Curry snaps, he's just absolutely electric around the ball. The awareness on this play to read the draw, win over the right tackle as if he wasn't there, and then dive into the path of the running back to bring him down. You shouldn't be making that tackle as a defensive end, but he is. And this is a player that does have a really high upside. It is a Hassan Ridgeway level move. These same qualities were demonstrated all throughout the season. Like, look at the angle he takes on this tackle for a loss here against Joe Mixon. The pursuit off the edge, the way he's able to come down, read it so well, he's not overzealous here, squares up, gets his shoulders nice and low, and brings him down. Cleveland Browns changed scheme this offseason, and I think that ultimately Avery was a misfit. He was a defensive end that was then going to be asked to play linebacker, and they already had linebackers. He wasn't going to see the field too much. A fourth round pick for a player with this kind of upside that fits this scheme so well, and may, just may, fix the disconnect between the pass rush, the linebackers, and the second secondary or at least one aspect of it it's a steal for a future fourth round pick and I honestly cannot wait to see him progress over the next eight weeks we may not see him make an impact right away come the playoffs should that possibility arise I think he's going to surprise a lot of people but guys let me know what you think down in the comments below and you will be entered into the draw to win a t-shirt from myself Liam Jenkins thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video I hope it's given you some insight on the newest eagle into the nest if you want to follow me on Twitter it's at Liam Jenkins PSN I'll see you soon